see the airplanes in Trieste, it seems. So, so, okay, I wanted to start a bit with a recap from yesterday. I will try to be slower. I got this feedback that I should be a bit slower in speaking. Uh, I will try that, but if, it, if I do not succeed, just tell me again. So, just understand what we were discussing yesterday. Um, by the way, I, I, sent you, I sent you the slides, or Erika sent you the slides, hopefully, to everyone. And so what I will try to do is, uh, is every evening after the lecture, write up a bit or clean up a bit what I have as notes and send out to you directly so that you get, in the, in the, get them in the evening. It's not before the lecture, but afterwards you, you will see the same thing that we discussed. So, so okay, so what we, just a recap from yesterday, just to understand, well, what is important, what is not important. So, there was, uh, there were, I think, many slightly new subjects. So, we, there was a lot of discussion about what markets are, and uh, so I, MKT will start for mar stand for markets. Uh, so, what markets are, who are the actors in markets, why they exist, all these. Um, and there was also a long discussion, of course, about uh, uh, what is economics and what is econophysics. And just to make clear, I mean, th this was to introduce things. It was for a general culture. So what I think is that it's, uh, it's uh, these are important ideas and it's, uh, to, to, to read about and to understand why we are discussing here things, and I'm happy to chat about them. But these are not things that you have to study, and uh, you don't have to come to an exam discussing why markets are important. So this is uh, just to make clear. Um, there was the, the point of, uh, we had an overview of different products. Overview of products. Now then, there again, I mean, I, I don't expect you to, to, to answer to an exam to questions of what the details of uh, options are exactly, what the payoff looks like. But I think that's more important for, apart from general culture, but also to understand the dynamics of what we'll discuss in the future, so in the next uh, lectures, it's important to know what these products are to, to, to be able to, to, to think about uh, the results that we see. And then there were some things which were, uh, which are more, uh, which were essentially quite basic in, uh, in time series analysis, but things that well, we will really use explicitly. So there, just to make clear, so the main thing I think was, uh, was to discuss uh, variograms. Is it legible, uh, readable if I uh, write not with capital letters? So, so variograms and what we call the signature plots. Where, so variogram is simply the, the, the looking at the, the second moment of the, of the changes in the time series. So what we defined, it's uh, Ah, sorry, I didn't give that. So, so for a, a time series X, you look at the, the, the changes on a time scale tau, uh, and you look at the second moment of this. So you, can, you look at the expectation of the square. We called it, well, you can variogram or variance if, 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 if your toe is defined, um, which we discussed a bit in detail. And what was important, so this is the first part, and signature plot is, as I said, I don't know why, actually it's called like this, maybe someone knows. But it's uh, some. It's the veto over two function. Simply, how did this, did this variance increases with the time scale, normalized by the time scale. Why do you normalize by the time scale? It's easier to visualize. Well, it, for as we discussed, for a normal diffusion, you expect this guy to increase linearly in uh, in time. So if you divide by two, you will have a flat line. And about this things that we will explicitly look at in this lecture. So as I said, you can also look at correlation, but this is a good way to try to understand if, if, uh, if, uh, if a process is diffusive or sub-diffusive or super-diffusive. So what, what, what we discussed yesterday is, uh, is, is if this, uh, uh, 
Okay, let, let, okay let, let's, it's, is that this signature plot veto over tau for a diffusive process you expect it to be to be flat? It's a function of tau, of course. And for uh, for for a super diffusive, so a trending process, a positive autocorrelation, a positive correlation uh, in sequential steps, you expect some increasing behavior. And for mean reverting prof process, so sub diffusive, you expect some uh, decreasing behavior. So this is uh, sub diffusive. This is super. On time, sometimes, because typically for, for actual time series, uh, you will have some time dependence of this uh, veto over tau for a given time scale, and it will flatten out eventually because all correlations normally after some time scale die, but it's just in practice. So, so this was. Uh, so this was this we discussed, and so as I said, but just to repeat, so essentially super diffusion is a, is a sign that there are positive correlations in sequential test steps, and sub diffusion is that there are negative correlations mean reversion. Um, so this is just to, to, to summarize from yesterday. Uh, I hope I'm, I hope I, it was clear, and then we lost five minutes now, but maybe it's better to do that. Um, so I wanted to, there were two things I wanted to discuss yesterday before getting to, to, to new, 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 New questions. Uh, so things which surely you all know, but it's it's good to write them up once, and we will use them later. So one is about uh, about discussing in general the. So we, we looked at uh, we looked at random variables, and we looked at typically the the, the second moment of uh, uh, of the distribution. But sometimes you want to look at the entire distribution, and one thing that is important is to look at the sums of random variables, uh, which, uh, which, which we'll do sometimes. So I'm, I'm introducing things that I hope you know. But so uh, let's say that you have uh, x1 and x2, so capital X1 and capital X2, which are uh, uh, independent random variables. And with uh, each having a distribution, so, so X1 will have some P1 uh, X1 distribution and uh, P2 X2. So the probability that X1 takes a value, capital X1 takes a value small X1 will be this probability. So this is the distribution. And, uh, and what we can be interested in, okay, we, we know these two distributions, but what we can in, be interested in is that we take a third random variable, let's call it simply capital X, which will be the sum of these two. Which, is, uh, which happens often. So, of course, here we are talking about random variables. So, it's uh, one with, okay, so summing random variables. But essentially, if you have a time series with uh, so a stochastic process with random changes, then, of course, changing the time scale on which you are looking at, uh, at, um, at some change is similar to this. So, so the, the, the change in a large window will be some of the changes in the smaller windows. So, it's, it's getting into the same. Same problem. So if you have uh, a random variable which is the sum of these two random variables, you want to be, you will be interested probably in its, uh, in its distribution. And naturally, what you know, it will be the joint dist probability distribution of, well, the, 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 the probability that, that, uh, that this x takes a value x or in a small window around this will be, well, it will be the joint distribution of two things, of one, that the first variable takes some value, let's call it x1, and that the second variable takes a value which, may, in order to sum to x, will be x minus x1. So these two probabilities, just be two in our definition, and of course, you want to look at the, all, the, all the possible realizations, so what you will have is, a, is an integral overall, uh, sorry, uh, this I, I called x1 something else, so let's call this x, x prime here. So it will be dx prime. So what you, uh, I, mean, I hope it's clear what I'm doing here. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, you, you look at the two probabilities um, and you, 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 you scan the x. And what you, this has a name, it's not just, a, I mean, I, I'm avoiding to say the name, but this we call convolution. This, um, 
this is what we see here. So, so the so the distribution of, of, of the sum of two random variables will be the, the convolution of the of the distributions. And of course, what I discuss here is for two variables, but uh, we can I mean it can be written up for for any number of random variables. You will have much more terms in 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 this uh, in this uh, in the convolution, so in the integral. Um, why this is uh, um, so this okay? This is the the general rule. I mean, I guess you all studied this. And what is um, and what is important is that uh, is that uh, as you know that there are there are distributions which are stable. Uh, what is how do you say it? Um, under the stable under convolution, so so probability distributions that that the, the, the sum of the so if they have the same distribution the, the variables have the same distribution then the sum of the variables will have the same distribution as well this is only valid for these are called stable distribution and these are is valid only for the for two distributions well it's it's the family of distributions which are the levy uh, distribution which we won't discuss now in detail um, uh, with, with a certain power, power law depa uh, tail dependence, and the other one, which I guess you know well, is the Gaussian. Gaussian, uh, right? I mean, everyone knows the Gaussian. So, what, what the Gaussian is? Uh, I, I'm always using really the space I'm using in a bad way. So, so, so what, what the Gaussian is uh, is the following. So, so uh, it's a it's a well known distribution, I think. So with a with a variance uh, sigma squared and an average mu. Of course, one can uh, so, so mu usually you 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 take it to zero. You hope that I mean, you, you demean the uh, your your time series, but uh, but this is the, the the general way of writing it. Um, uh, one thing that I wanted to say about. Uh, about why this well, this convolution will be interesting for two things. So sums of random variables will be interested for two two uh, two things. One is that um, okay, now let's let's let's, okay, let's let's get to to, to directly to, to the second one. So to because okay, I want uh, scale. I think uh, I think you discussed scale invariance a bit in detail in the in the other courses in this, right? Okay, so. So, 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 so there are these uh, distributions, Levy and Gaussian, which are stable under convolution, but uh, but it's a bit more than this because Gaussian is a special distribution that, that there are m many other distributions uh, which, uh, if you sum the variables under convolution, go to a Gaussian, which is called the central limit theorem, which I'm sure that you studied. And I want to just recall this a bit uh, for. Uh, to discuss it in a way that it might be, that will be important for us. So, so the central limit theorem, which is uh, okay, which is in the in the classical formulation. Let's start with this. You have uh, some x uh, i variables which are i i d. So. Uh, Identically and independently distribu distributed, and um, but we don't know how it's distributed for the moment. And you define uh, their sum, so you define some S n, which will be the sum of n of these variables. The sum of uh, n of these variables, and what the tradition in a traditional way, what uh, what uh, the central limit theorem says is that the following variables. So if you take this S n. You you demean it so, and you normalize it uh, by its uh, variance times square root of n. So so by the typical variations. So okay, let's call this variable uh, is distributed in the following way. So
it's this you have just seen. So it's distributed in this way if uh, if n goes to infinity. So what it means, well, this, this we have just seen this distribution there. So it means that the central region of this uh, of this distribution, so which is defined by this, uh, the central region will be more and more Gaussian uh, of uh, of this variable. If in two cases, so one is written here, if if n goes to infinity. Uh, let's say go sin center. Uh, if, if n goes to infinity, but another thing that is important in this case, which which probably you know, is that and if n goes to infinity and uh, sigma, sigma is finite, so the second moment of the distribution is finite. Uh, otherwise, you, you cannot really write this up. So this is the, the traditional way to to talk about. Um, the, the central limit theorem. Uh, this is known, right? Uh, what I wanted to discuss a bit in more in detail here is, um, is, is okay, so, so how much this IID, what does it really mean? Because IID is super nice to say that you have IID data, so identically and independently distributed data, but if you have uh, real actual data, you cannot really know this, and normally they are, no, nothing is really in, independent. So, so I wanted to, just quickly review these. So, 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 so when is this true? The, uh, the traditionally, what you say is one is uh, that that well, x i are identical. identically distributed, but it's not really true. So what you actually expect is that, uh, is that they are similarly distributed. Yeah. Here in the exponential, uh, is it really one over square root of u, 2u? Uh, because no, sorry, this is, two pi. Sorry. Uh, sorry. It's, 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 I mean, yeah. sorry, this is 2 pi. Sorry. Sorry, it's, I mean, right, I'm. Uh, sigma. Well, sigma. Hmm? Exactly. No, this is a square root. square root of the number of points times the okay. sigma. No, this is the total, will be the total variance of this on, on Sn. So sigma is the variance of a single point. The variance of, of N, the sum of N points will be square root of N times this, uh, the <coughs> typical uh, fluctuation. This. So the probability, the probability that this, so this is a number here. Sn is the sum of n variables. You can take off the mean and, and, uh, and uh, normalize it. And so the probability that it is between two numbers, a and b, will be this, in, this Gaussian integral between a and b. Yes, but I mean, if we don't, we don't say. Is the product probability? No, so, the, okay, so this probability, well, we didn't, okay, here what we, what we only say is that, uh, is that this probability, which is the, so the probability that this guy is between A and B is given by this. We don't yet say about anything the, uh, about this probability, but what we have just seen before is that uh, the probability of the, the distribution of the sum will be a convolution of the, of the, uh, of each probability. Uh, sorry, of each, uh, it will be a convolution of each distribution, of the distributions. So what actually what you see here is that 
no matter what the distribution of this is, apart from uh, well-behaving second moment, after convolution, it will go to a Gaussian distribution. So this is what the central limit theorem said. Yes. Yes, but we didn't specify here what we said about these probabilities here. So they, I mean, we didn't even write up the, the each probability. Is that they have a finite second moment and that they are IID. So which means that what we saw for the sum of random variables that under convolution there are some stable laws. So if each variable is distributed in a Gaussian distribution, so normal, normal distributed, the convolution will be also normal distributed. So this is the tableness. But it's also an, somehow a basin of attraction. So there are many other distributions of which the convolution goes to the Gaussian. The product, if in a Fourier in space, it would be product. But it's a convolution, so it's not. Well, we can. Um, so, so we said that they, they need to be identically distributed if you, write, if you read the theory. But what it actually means that what you want is, is you want somehow similar variances. And I'm, I'm vague here, but so what you want is that, that the different xi, even if they are not identically distributed, there is no one variance which dominates above the others. They are somehow comparable, the variances. Uh, it's a bit vague to say like this, but I think, I think it's clear. Uh, the other point which is uh, important, so what the other i we said here is we say that i, x, xi are independent. Which is, again, not really true. What you want is that they are not too much correlated. And we'll see in a second what we mean by too much correlated. Um, so let's, so, okay, what does this guy really mean here? What we say here is that you can, uh, so you have these xi uh, uh, random variables, and you can define, as we said yesterday, you can define a correlation uh, at leg i minus j, which will be, uh, minus x uh, squared. So this is Cij. And okay, let's assume uh, for simplicity that, that, that Ci minus j is, uh, is this. So, so there is no, uh, so, so, so the, 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 there is essentially time translation, uh, time, time reversal uh, independence. So, so the, the correlation between i minus j is the same as the correlation between j minus i. Um, so if, if, if you have a process like this, you can write up the variance. So you can say that you look at the, I mean, the, the, the variance of s, s n square. So you look at the, uh, sorry, the variance of s n. So you look at this expectation. So s n is the sum of these variables, uh, sum of n of these variables, which can be, uh, which will be simply uh, the sum of uh, these, uh, this uh, absolute value. So if you put uh, this inside, it will be just uh, the, the sum of these correlations, which very similarly to how yesterday we wrote up some things, if you write this up, there will be n terms which behave as sigma squared, this is a sigma, uh, which will be the cases when i equals, is equal to j, and there, we, there will be other terms who will be like this. So it's what, what we're doing is simply summing this, these correlations one can write it up. I think it's, uh, uh, there is, I mean, writing up, up the sum is not hard. So, but what the, the so what, what the message of this is, so what does this really mean? You see that um, here you have some L terms that you are summing. And, um, 
L terms times CL. So what, what, what one can learn from this is that if CL, CL decays uh, faster than 1 over L, so if the correlation with lag will decay faster than 1 over L, then this, uh, then this guy here actually will go to, uh, to a constant. So the second term, sorry. So the second term will be a constant, this, uh, this sum. And then you can, so you, then you can say uh, that, uh, that indeed Sn square will be proportional to, to, to n which is exactly what, the, what uh, the central limit theorem says that it holds. So what we can learn from this is that, yes, officially we say xi have to be independent, but the truth is that we want them not to be too much correlated, and not to be too much correlated means that the correlation decays faster than 1 over L. So you, you can have correlations and still, uh, and still the central limit theorem should hold. Uh, and the third thing that I wanted to say, which is, uh, which is written here, but it's, it's good to keep in mind, so okay. Let's say this was one, this was two, and this was three, that, uh, that everything here is, uh, so all information we have is about the center. Of the distribution. So we do not know, but we can say that for finite n, of course, that, 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 that the center of the distribution is going to a Gaussian that we cannot really say much about the, about the, about the tails. Well, it's, 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 it's written here, but it's to be kept in mind because with actual data, it's very hard to, to, to you never have infinite number of points. Um, so I think, I hope this is uh, okay. If, so, okay, so yeah, it's, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm doing shorthand. So inf all the information that we have is about the center of the distribution. So this, this is essentially what you have here, that if n goes to infinity, then you can, uh, then, 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 then for the entire distribution, you will be able to write up. But if n is finite, then between some a and b, you will be able to say something, but not about, uh, so, so more points you have, more you can say, but about, you cannot describe the entire distribution for a finite number of them. Um, so, okay, so this was what I wanted to discuss yesterday. Um, and, uh, and okay, so, so, and now we will get something to something completely different for a time, and then we'll get back to this. So, unfortunately, we have to discuss a bit what, uh, so where we will get to, 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 to a bit of finance again, which may, that's not unfortunate. I can clean this side. Um, but we have to understand, so yesterday, okay, there was a general discussion, what is a market, why it exists, and all these type of things. But, uh, but we have to be a bit more concrete and try to understand how, what, what, what are prices in the market. So, so. Yes? If uh, dk faster than 1 over L, this part will be 0. No, then, so, okay. Then this part, so the, the second, will be a constant if. Okay? And so, so then what dominates is this uh, n linear in n term. Um, so, 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 so the question is, okay, how are, how are prices set somehow this? Or let's say, what is a price? So, 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 so we are getting a bit more to actual finance here, even if in the language we had some, uh, so, uh, some hints. So, okay, the, there are some very trivial claims, claims that uh, someone buying in the market wants to buy low, so pay, pay a small amount of money. And, uh, and uh, those who want to sell want to get a lot of money, so it's, it's, it's a trivial claim. But it means that, to, 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 to okay, so it's if, if trades are infrequent, then you can, you, can, uh, you can expect people to negotiate. Like you go to the market and you're negotiating. Actually, I have a, 
we shouldn't lose much time, but uh, uh, so I have this quotation from a book, uh, actually it's a fun book about finance. So, but it's a type of negotiation. So how much is it? It's 150, okay, I'll take it. Oh, then it's 160. But what you just said, it's 150. Yeah, yeah, but that was before I knew you wanted it. You cannot do that. Okay, I mean, I leave you guys, it's visible, right? It's, let me know if you read it. it okay, it's, it's, it's not extremely deep. There are some deep hints in it. I mean, it's not obvious that, that the price is here is going up because of the quantity going up. But anyway, it's super hard. So, so, so if you have to negotiate on all trades, it's, it takes a lot of time. Um, and apart from that, of course, you have also some what we could, they call counterparty risk, which means that if I buy from you, somehow I depend on you. So if I give you my money, and you can run away with it without giving me the, what I need. So, which, okay, it's not a typical thing in the market, but it's something that can happen, or if, we, if, we are, it's, in the, if it's on the internet that I buy, so there is some risk in it that, that it's, it's a one-to-one -one trading. So typically what, you, what we say is that you need a mechanism to, to what we discussed yesterday, to, to make uh, buyers and sellers meet, but it's not at all trivial how to organize a market, so how to, so to avoid this. Of course, negotiation you can do if you do it once a day, but you cannot do it with high frequency. So, uh, so, so I wanted to discuss first one type of trading, which is called uh, valorizing an auction. which is not the way markets really function today, but it's, it's, I think it's a good way to, to understand how what it is. So, so Walras is, is a person, he was Leon Walras, uh, an economist in, I think, early 20th century. So what uh, the, the solution to all this, I mean, you can guess it from here. This is the, so the main thing is that if you, do a, if you specify a price at which you will trade, it should be some firm commitment. You cannot just uh, change it uh, whenever you want. So, so this, it seems to be a trivial idea, but, but, but it somehow had to come with it, come up with it. And so, so, so the way a Warazian auction works is the following. There is a specified uh, person who is an, called an auctioneer, so someone who is, who is different from the others, who is keeping a list of all wishes of others. So anyone who wants to buy at a given price comes to him and says, I want to buy at this price. He writes it up in his small uh, notebook. And... Um, and keeps this list and waits for other people to come. And at some given moment, he decides, okay, betting is over. It can be decided in advance that it will be at 6 p.m. or it could be a random time. And what he does is he tries to set, decide on a price so that most people are, uh, the, the highest number of people are happy after this. Okay, it seems to be a fair way of doing so. So just to, so what you say is that there is an auctioneer who is somehow special, and there are uh, uh, prices, uh, or uh, what, what's the good word for it? Uh, what, or quotes, let's say, let's call it quotes. So everyone can give a quote of how much he would be pay, willing to buy or how much he wants to get. Quotes are given to him. And then at the end, auctioneer sets a price. He starts in, in a way that the uh, highest number of happy people. Um, so, 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 so to, well, well, we can also try to, actually, I have a figure about it, so I won't draw it. Okay, so, so, so uh, one can, can look at this in the following way. So what you can do is put on the x-axis the prices. So each person defines, I'm happy to buy at $103. And on the y-axis, we can put the accumulated quantity. What do you understand by accumulated quantity? So if, let's say, there is a price here of, 100, then here you put everyone who would be ready to buy, um, who would be ready to buy to, at, at a price uh, not higher than 100. So that's why, so 
on the buy side. So that defines a, a, a demand curve, which is this one here. So it's, it, it, is a, it is a cumulative curve. Every, you, you can see everyone who is, uh, so that's why it's a, it's a, it's a decreasing curve. Uh, because as you go to the left, you are adding new people to, to existing ones. So someone who would be available to buy at 101 will be, of course, available to buy at 100 as well. He will be happy. Uh, so this is the demand curve for buying and the supply curve for selling, which is in the same way, just the monotonic in the other direction. Is it clear? Okay. Well, someone said yes, but for the others, is it clear? So, 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 so one can write up a, a demand and supply curve, which, is, uh, which, which sums up everyone who is, uh, uh, who, who is ready to buy at a price this or lower, and those who are ready to, ready to sell at a price this or higher. And so in this language, you can easily set this P star price. The P star price will be the, the point where these two cumulative curves meet. So there will be exactly Q star people who want to buy at a higher price, and who want to sell at a lower price, so you can set this price. All of these will be happy to, to trade at this price, and everyone else will be happy that he didn't trade it because all those who stay and wanted to buy would have wanted to buy at a price which is lower, and all those who stay and want, want, wanted to sell would have wanted to sell at a price which is higher, so they wouldn't have been happy with this price. Um, Okay, so, so this, is, uh, this is one type of, 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 of doing a trade, and actually this is what usually is called an auction today. I mean, in an auction typically you put all your, uh, okay, if you have an auction for one single product, of course there it's, uh, this maximizing the happy number of people doesn't work, but if there are many products, it's uh, an auction usually is called like this. The problem with this uh, Varas auction is that, well, it works well, there are many people who are happy, but, uh, but what is missing from it is uh, right here. So, so what, is, what is the problem is that there is no coordination between people. So what this means is that they are blind. There is an auctioneer who has the list of what people are want to do, but everyone is giving him what they want to do. So this is a happy moment. Of course, you can have something like this that, that they set the price well, but of course you, you could have a situation like this. So uh, this is cumulative quantity, and this is the price exactly like there. You can say, okay, these are those who want to buy, these are those who want to sell, and there will be no one trading. And maybe they would have traded had they known that, that uh, that, uh, that, no, that, that at this price nothing will happen, maybe they change their price. So, so there is no real information in a single game. Of course, you can do, do multiple games and uh, there will be more information, but it's very slow to, 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 to advance. Um, a solution to this in, 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 in the traditional Varazian auctions is to introduce uh, market makers. We, we mentioned this yesterday. So what you can add to these markets before getting to another system is to, well, either the auctioneer or someone else who somehow posts some visible, so, so, so someone who knows the inflow of, of orders coming from the others, he, 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 he gives away a bit of information of, of where the typical prices are. So a market maker can, uh, instead of just uh, getting the list, uh, Okay, uh, maybe it's better if I also write things. Yes, yes, so, so, so quantity would be for any given price, so, 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 so the full curve here, let's say, so this one is, is people who want to buy, demand. So quantity would be how many people do want to buy at price, at this price here. But actually, of course, if you want to buy at this price, you will also be happy to buy at a lower price if someone sells you. So cumulated quantity is the number of people who would be ready to buy at this price or anything lower. So that's why it's, uh, that's why it, it's monotonic, monotonous. Well, we didn't put zero here. We just put at zero, everyone wants to buy. It would be probably good for everyone who knows about it. And, um, and the same for, for selling. What about the other curve? What about? The, the supply curve. Yeah. This? It's, it's those who want to sell. Oh, okay. 
it's, so it's, it's supply, those who want to sell, and it's, it's the symmetric. Uh, so, so, so the solution, so the problem here is that, that, that people cannot, uh, uh, cannot coordinate and, and there might be much less trade then, so people will be unhappy at the end. So you can, you can introduce what, what, what they call market makers. Who, is, who have some obligations in the market uh, and they have some privileges to, for, for these obligations. And so what the obligation is to put visible quotes. So what they do is they get all this information here, but if they feel, but, but, but okay, in, in any case, they get the information, they can have some calculation for them to, to say, okay, what is the typical price at which people want to buy and typical price they sell? And there he can put, so he can signal to the, to the others that this is a realistic price. If you put around this, you, you might be able to execute. If you put very far away, you won't be able to execute. Uh, of course, the, these codes that he puts, so, so this is what we put uh, in the beginning here. So, so what we say is that, 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 that putting a quote is a firm commitment. So. Sorry? I think once we reach yeah, they, the they, don't, they don't see P star, right? P star is set after these two curves are okay, given. So this is the beginning, they Everyone, it's, I ask you guys, okay, how much do, would you and pay then for? Right? Yeah, yeah, so, 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 so okay, yeah. this is not here. Yeah, there are the two curves I'm writing up, I'm asking you to buy, I don't okay. know, I have an apple, I'm selling it. I have something that I'm buying, whatever. <laughs> and, and then I look at it and just, okay, what is the, everyone will be, so one solution is, is to have some, some designated person who gives away information. We can discuss a bit in detail about this if you want later, but it's, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not, uh, not that important. What is important, of course, that if he puts a visible code at some measure, at, at some price, he has to buy at this price and he has to sell at the other price. So, so, so he, can, he cannot just do what he wants because if uh, he puts a price and everyone wants to buy at this, then he will sell a lot of products and he will, he will have to buy them somewhere. So he, will, he wants to uh, keep everyone every zero, zero inventory in his pocket. Someone was, yeah. Everyone who wants to sell, sell below P star or who wanted to buy above will be satisfied. Well, it's not really true. The others will be satisfied in a sense that it's a bit a question how you define being satisfied. So someone who wanted to sell at this price will be satisfied in the sense that he doesn't trade and that because there would no, be no one to trade at this. So he wouldn't be satisfied to sell at P star. So it's, but they are satisfied. Um, Okay, so, 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 so these are the traditional, I'm making a mess here. Uh, these are the traditional, uh, traditional mechanisms of how markets work, but, uh, but actually today's markets are very much based on these mechanisms, but, uh, but, but, but are different. And so I will, uh, I will come with that now. So I wrote these two lines here and I will clean it. I hope you, you don't mind keeping this for a while. So, so today, uh, okay, this could be electronic or not an electronic, but somehow there is the idea that someone has to collect the, the orders. Well, what, what markets today work, uh, however, it's, it's called continuous time double auctions. I write up, but it's continuous time double auction. So, which uh, the, the name tells us, okay, it's in continuous time. What does it mean? That everyone at any moment can send uh, his quotes, so send his, um, his uh, wish to trade in any sense. And of course, if he finds someone, he's executed immediately. So it's not, not that there is a price set at some uh, uh, either random or fixed time. And it's also, well, we call it double auction, which is everyone can buy and sell in this system. Uh, 
Now, how does it work? Typically, okay, so this is the official name uh, of these uh, of these markets. So there is no explicit auctioneer. It's, it's a computer that uh, that that uh, that manages the orders that come. And uh, a figure. So this is a, a figure of a of a limit order book. So, so orders are stored. Orders stored in a limit order book. Which I will call just for simplification LOB in the future. Uh, and this is an example of a limit order book. So what happens is, um, is that well, you can see all the buy orders from in, in decreasing price. It is, here you have the quantity, so it's not accumulated quantity. If you integrated this downwards, it would be the accumulated quantity. So someone would be happy to buy at 800, uh, 800 at this price. Uh, okay, you, you can see it. And, and these are the, the orders to sell. Obviously, prices are higher, so the, the, the lowest sell price and the highest buy price, there's a difference between them. Otherwise, they would have already traded, probably. Uh, so, so this is what we call a, call a limit order book. So essentially, it's the list of all orders that are, uh, that are waiting. What is important is that unlike in this situation here, it's not only an auctioneer that sees it, it's, this is visible to anyone anytime. In constant, you can see what's going on. Yeah. Sorry? For example, second people and third people. Ah, so what will happen here? Yes, yes okay, so that, that, that's market dependent. But, but we can, so there are, typically what happens is uh, the, what they call price time priorities. Priority. So if you put a better price, you are the first. And if you were the first, so you, you have uh, the, the precedence, but if you were the first in time, then you, will, uh, then you will have the precedence. So here probably this arrived before this. There are also other markets where it doesn't work like that. There are markets which are called pro rata, which means that the larger volume you put, the more probability you have to be able to trade. Uh, but if someone uh, a huge amount of something at the beginning, uh, with the same price, and buy the others, which are you know, with, with lower prices, uh, we can control the market. For example, if the, if the second guy in the Sell order, uh, yes. Buy all of the stuff of the first guy. But they both, yeah, but I mean, sure, he can buy it, but why would he do yes. it? Yes, uh, but after a while, he can control the market with his price. Well, but he, he, he invested a huge amount of money for this. Yes. He, he bought, sure. If, if you go and buy, you go to the market, buy all the apples, you can, but uh, I mean, unless you have some good goal with this, uh, otherwise, you, you, you just bought a so essentially, if this guy wanted to buy at this price, he, he wouldn't be in this list to sell, but he would have just bought in the first place. So, so this, is a, this is what we call a limit order book. So, so the, 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 the list of everything which has not been executed immediately in the market. Uh, by definition, so there are the, the type of orders in a limit order book is, well, the first is what we call limit order. Actually here, so uh, all this story that we are seeing here, so actually, no, especially here, so from about limit order books, it seems to be storytelling, but this is extremely important to understand the, story, the, the mechanism, so don't hesitate to act. So there are things that we call limit order. So how, what does a limit order say? Well, we more or less see or there. So, well, you can define if you want to buy or sell, of course, uh, a given amount. of the, the thing there at a given at, at, at a given price. So at a given price, of course, means that at a price which is not worse than what you gave. You will be happy to trade at a better price. But so you have three things here. Uh, so of course, you can say what you want your direction. You can define an amount. But what is important is that you also define a price, which is actually called the limit price. 
of your order. That's why it's called limit order. And that's where it's a, there is a difference of the other type of orders, which are called market orders, which say buy or sell, of course, you can always define a given amount. So you only have two things that you define, so you want your direction and how much you want to trade, and you say, okay, I want to trade it now. I want to trade it at the best that I can, I mean, uh, give me the best price that there is in the market, uh, but I want to trade it now. So, so what, what market orders give you is, is, uh, is somehow immediacy. They are, uh, if there is someone available to sell, if there is someone in the list, if you say, I want to buy, you sell the market order to buy, you will execute against these people here up to the amount that you want to trade. Uh, so, 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 so you get your trade immediately, but of course at a price which is, well, if you're buying, you will buy at a higher price than these people there who are patient. So limit orders instead, of course, are not immediately executed. They are, they are queuing in the limit order book. Um, so limit orders are queuing in the limit order book. Of course, I mean, and either until someone uh, executes against them, someone sends a, a market order, or of course there is a, the possibility of cancellation of, uh, of a limit order. Okay, sorry, I will call limit orders LO and market orders MO for simplicity. Uh, so, so limit orders can be canceled, so someone of course can decide that, oh, I cancel this and instead I send a market order, or I cancel this and instead I go home, or and cancel it, or and instead I put another limit order at another price. Uh, so, so let's, so, so how does the, actually one can look a bit at the dynamics of this, so, so, so okay, this is the list that we have. Another way to look at it is actually very similar to what we saw for the, this Walras, Walras auctioneer. That you say that you, you on the x-axis you put the, the price uh, at which, and, and on the y-axis you put the quantity, so it's not a cumulated quantity here, it's not an integrated quantity, but for each price you see what is the quantity available uh, to buy or to sell at this price. And, um, and so, okay, the way this is drawn, one can think about this at some, as some type of deposition process, but it's not really important for us. But what can happen is that limit order can arrive to any, to any level of a level here and can be canceled by the given person who is there. Uh, and there are market orders who just execute against the best uh, on the opposite side up to some level, I mean, up to the quantity it wants. If someone wants to buy five here, so then he will be executing against this, 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 so until this, so against these, and he will pay the average price, I mean, the weighted average prices of these. Um, so, uh, two things that we, are see, we, we see here, one is that, so prices are, are discretized, so this is, this is a sort of discrete uh, grid, which we call tick size, so the minimum price difference between two possible limits is called the, the, the tick size, it's a definition, typically it's around one cent, for example, in the US. Uh, what you can also see is actually quantities are, are, are discretized as well. Of course, if you call them quantities, it's easy to dis imagine, but so it's, it's not, uh, it's a multiple of something that you can buy. You cannot just say that I want to trade for three euros, whatever the price is. Um, and, and two other things that we see here, so okay, well, these are definitions and they are sort of trivial, actually three things. So one is that it's just the question of language, buy orders are called bid, and sell orders are called ask orders, it's an English language. Uh, traditionally, this is the way they call them, so sometimes it, it's, uh, keep it in mind, because sometimes I see, pick this language more. Uh, you can see that typically there is a, some difference between the lowest sell price, or lowest ask, and highest bid price, which we will call bid ask spread. Well, there will be some difference, because if there was zero difference, of course, they would execute against each other. So at least a one tick difference, at least this minimum price difference that will exist. And then one other thing that we, that, that is here that we'll discuss sometimes, which we call mid price, 
which is the average of the mid price by definition is simply the flat average of, of the highest bid and lowest ask price. Of course, you could define other prices that your weight, your quantity weighted, but mid price is just halfway between these two. So, so I just uh, to to define them once and for all. So, you call the if you call the best, which means lowest, uh, highest bid. Uh, you call it B, and lowest ask you call A, then B, A minus B will be the bid ask spread, and A plus B over 2 will be the mid price. So these are definitions, nothing, nothing new here. Sorry? T here. Yeah, so, yeah. okay, on this, this is just a, it seems to be a snapshot, but of course, these are time dependent quantities. So, uh, yeah. I could have not written there, but sure, these all depend on time. So, so, the state of the book depends on time, and every variable depends on time. But, but this is a snapshot. So, it is a time T. Yes, yes, because if it were zero, they would execute against each other, so. Sorry? There is an average to set the price, or? Well, the price is, in this case, what, what prices will we have? We will have an execution, a trade price, so, so what, someone who is buying now will pay this price. It will be the trade price. Someone who is selling now will pay this price, and usually, it depends what we are looking at, but very often we are looking at this mid price between the two because we do not, if you're an outsider, you don't really care exactly. If you want to buy, you care more about this price. If you want to sell, you care more about this, but on average, it's more, the, it's more than the mean of the two that you care about. Um, and if the price is dependent on the number of shares, because if the number of shares is not enough, you have to buy Sure, but that, that, I mean, that, that, the price can be, depend on the quantity. You could say, okay, how much do I have to pay if I, now in this moment, I want to pay, pay, buy 100. If I want to buy 200, and price will be different if you do it in, a sh in one shot. This is actually very important. It will come up uh, a lot later. So, so this is what the limit, it's the limit of the book. I hope the dynamics are uh, clear. Uh, I just want to say one word about this. I'm really super slow. Um, there is a, uh, there is a, okay, the, uh, the, that's about the limit, okay, I, I won't say the other thing, I'll, I'll get to it later. Is this clear? Can we continue? So this sort of defines what, what, what a price is, so how a price is set, there are several mechanisms and uh, several possible definitions of prices, but, but this, this helps us know what, uh, what, what a price is. So, so what, uh, the next thing that we actually care about is trying to model, so, so things now hopefully will, will meet. So we discussed, okay, you care about the, the, the fluctuations of a quantity or the fluctuations of a second moment. We want to look at how the prices fluctuate. And, uh, and to do look at this first, uh, I will start with something which is called the random walk model. Which is, uh, we need some help, or? Which, uh, which is, a, which is a, a very traditional model. So it was, it was from by Louis Bachelier in 19, uh, 1900, who wrote, he was a mathematician, he was a, he was a student of Henri Poincaré in Paris. And he wrote uh, his thesis on Théorie de la Spéculation. So he wrote, uh, he, he was interested in gambling. And, um, and what is actually interested for physicists, but probably people know, so he was the first person actually to, to describe uh, Brownian motion. Uh, well, it's, it was 
before, I don't know, four years before, five years before, the, before Einstein. And, uh, and so he had two ideas which were very remarkable for, for, especially for his period, but I think they're remarkable also now. So one thing that he said is that, okay, um, we saw here that there are people who are buying, people who are selling, but in end, every transaction there is one buyer and there is one seller. So it says, okay, so at any given moment, the number of those who want to buy at the current price and those who want to sell is, uh, is the same if, uh, if there is a buyer and a seller in all sides. So what he said, okay, but if there's a safe number that, that, uh, that there is a balance, so what you can expect is that prices should be unpredictable in, in, in practice, right? So what he said is that, you want to buy because you think that price will go up, and you want to sell because you think price will go down. So if uh, each trade involves a seller and a buyer, so in each case, so, so the number of sellers will be the same as the number of buyers, roughly. And he said, okay, so prices should be, should be unpredictable. Right? Which, okay, today one would say that they are, they are marking it. So they would say that the expectation of price in the next step, given all the information up to now, is equal to the price now. He didn't write it this way, but it's, it's, it's the same type of claim, uh, which is, I think, very interesting. We will, we will see. I mean, uh, uh, we'll see how much it is true. And something else that he said, uh, he said uh, that well, if 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 price changes are are IID, I'm too fast. If price changes are IID, so independently and identically distributed, and they have a zero mean, then due to the central limit theorem that we have seen before. Uh, you expect that that uh, that price changes should be Gaussian. So, if I write just price changes should be Gaussian, so this is uh, there should be Gaussian on on some on some aggregate time scale, of course. So I mean, if if you add up uh, small time scales, you should be Gaussian maybe on daily time scales. Here, yeah. Uh, so what I just say here is, I mean, this is a modern way of saying, so he said prices are unpredictable, so the, there is no linear correlation. The, what I say is that the expectation of the price at t plus one, given all the information up to now, so we are in t now, sorry, in time t now, the expectation of price at t plus one, given all the information, is the price now. So you say that it's the, it's the same probability that it will go down and it will go up. So it's, it's unpredictable, or I mean, weighted by the size of the study. Yeah? Sorry, so it's the marking Yeah. Yeah, this, so, 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 so what, what he said that prices are unpredictable, it's uh, what today, if one wants to be clean, says that it's a marking PT here, yes. Yes. So, if you want to be clean with a martingale, you would put this. But, but, but no. So, but actually, I can say that even more. So, even if you knew the price yesterday and the day before, it won't. Turn. So, so that's more the way the bachelor put it. But yeah, yeah. The, the increment bit. Yes. Yes. No, no. So price changes are Gaussian on, on, an aggregate. Okay. So what he said it is essentially central limit theorem. If these are IID zero mean here, I think that. Yes, yeah, so on one day maybe. I don't know if I mean. 
if this changes every second, so on, I don't know, in one day how many seconds there are, they should go to Earth. No, the changes, the change, so price changes. The, about the value of the price, uh, we don't know how it's distributed. What he says here is that on an aggregate scale, price changes should, so, so, okay. I, so here, of course, before this, so, so he said that if changes are IID, then, on some aggregate scale, they should go, because of the central limit theorem, to a Gaussian. The central limit theorem should be the sum of the change. Yes, exactly. But the, sum of the, the, time, the price change on a long scale is the sum of price changes on short scales. It's, uh, right? You can always write up uh, P T plus T minus P T as P T plus T minus P T plus T minus 1. Plus P, sorry, T plus T minus one minus plus T minus two, etc. So I mean, then continue. It's a, how do you call? It? There is a name of this. Okay, for this summing. So 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 this was uh, these were the two 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 ideas in his thesis. So and he uh, and there is one thing out of this that which actually is called Bachelier is. Uh, First law, but we'll only talk about one law of Bachelier. So. Is essentially putting putting things together that he had in his in his PhD is that um, what he says that the, exactly the price variogram. So in today's language, at least, and he might have not put it exactly like that. The price variogram should increase linearly in time. So exactly what we said. It's visible. So he said uh, that this guy here should go linearly in the time scale, meaning that prices are diffusive. So, well, it's, 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 um, it's a variant of, of, of this first claim here. And, uh, and he obtained a large amount of results about this. So what he said is this, so, so that prices are diffusive. Actually, it was, uh, it was super interesting what he did. So there are a lot of uh, results uh, exactly on option pricing and all these he came up, so which results on how the price on a time scale should diffuse and how, for example, what's the value of an option in this case, so 70 years before, before modern option pricing has been done. So, so let's see if these are true or not, so this claim. Uh, okay, this we won't discuss. Uh, yeah. So this uh, this is a is a way so 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 well this, this was the the law of Bachelet. That's this is what Bachelet claimed at the end of all his thesis. Okay. And it's well it's it's uh, it's very much related to this first claim here, so that they are they are unpredictable. Those two hypotheses are sufficient to the for the law. Right? Actually, the second one you don't even need for the law. What you need is uh, is uh, yeah, uh, and uh, and so. So, yeah. Sorry. That? I didn't get it. Yes, but it's, it's the same. It, it means this. But you didn't mention the variance of the IID. You just wrote IID, but you didn't, you didn't say anything about it. Yeah, we didn't go through the entire thesis. I, mean, I, I say that he, he made some claims, but the main claim was this. So we should test if it's true or not. It, uh, indeed, I didn't go through the entire uh, thesis now. But, um, so, so the question is this. We want to look at these things. Is this true or not? And so here we have uh, two figures which should be related. So one is, so that, that's why we discussed all these variograms and signature plots yesterday. So one is, uh, one is the, the, the variogram itself, so, 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 so this guy. 
as a function of time for 50 years for, well, for the Dow Jones index, but it's pretty important. And you have the feeling that indeed it's, uh, it's very much linear in time. Uh, linear in time scale. Well, you, it's, okay, variogram is tricky because you don't, visually it's not obvious to see what, uh, what's the truth. You see that here there are some uh, deviations, but, uh, okay, I don't know how this works. Uh, but, uh, but you see that, that, that indeed it seems to be diffusive, similar to, 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 to a random log behavior. And another way to look at this, this is why we discussed actually the, the signature plot uh, the, the other day, is to look at, so, so look at the, the variogram divided by the time scale. So it's sort of the same information, but it's easier to, to visually see. Actually, it's for other data. It's for the, from the S&P 500 uh, index uh, futures contract. Uh, and what you see here is that, okay, so there is the signature plot as a function of, of time lag. Uh, what you can see is that it seems to be very much flat. So which is, well, it's the same type of result that, that, that prices seem to be diffusive at least after a few hours. There is a very slight decay maybe. But you, if you zoom in, so, so this part here can be seen here, you see that there is a slight negative trend on short time scales. You seem to have some sub diffusion, so some mean reverting behavior on, on time scales that say under, so this is in hours. Okay, it depends on which years you look at. So under, up to a few minutes, you have some, some, some uh, negative slope here. You seem to have some mean reversion of the price. But, but afterwards, prices are, uh, prices are diffusive. Actually, uh, we won't go into detail with, into this, but so, so this initial uh, mean reversion of the price is related to, to the mic microstructure of the book. So that since prices are not continuous, so, so there, there are all this discretization in the structure of, of the limit order book that, uh, that, that can cause some uh, bounces back and forth as a mean reverting behavior. Um, so that, uh, that about, uh, about, uh, about Bachelier, so, so it seems that, 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 that at least the, the question of, of diffusivity of prices is true uh, or is close to true for, for most of the time scales. Um, which, of course, uh, brings up a okay. Which, of course, brings up a question that if uh, yes. Yeah, so, 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 so the. So, so the fact that if you actually start to look at uh, look at prices, what you find on on relatively long time scales, yeah, sure, yeah. That the small part that is in one is log log graph, yes. Is log log graph. Log log, uh, yes. Uh, no, it's a uh, lean log. So it's log on the log log on the x-axis and linear on the y. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so uh, well, uh, we have on that more decreasing in the real. It will be an effect. Yeah, it's been one at that time, one. Yes. Okay. That's what you say that here there is a slightly more, uh, you see slightly more. But yeah, so it's, it's uh, this, actually I didn't make this plot myself. So what happens here is simply on the log log figure, uh, you, you, you set some, uh, the, I, what I, they do is they set some minimum uh, time scale here. So it's probably, it, it's from, it's from a few minutes that they start and they might have these first two or three points here which are, which are not on, the, on, on that uh, log log plot. Okay, well, so indeed, my what? Question, my question is related to the interval between one and 10. The time interval between one and 10. Here. It actually has a, you know, that decreasing in the graph. This? Call it. Yeah. yeah. That one. But in the graph, uh, where is that one? What you say, it, that one is here. It's, it's not really well visible, but it's here. Here, here you see a small hump and going back. Believe me. So, okay. so here, uh, it's, it's not super nice. I'm, I can maybe look for another figure if you want. But so what? Okay, well, and these data are not real data. This is not, this is all real, absolutely real data. This is, this, from, from now on, it's, we are only talking about real data. 
Otherwise, it's not a big deal that I show you something which is diffusive. It's real data. So real prices, indeed, after at least uh, a minimum time scale, behave in a diffusive manner. Well, it depends. Right, 250 so hours. I'm asking you that which, I mean, that which price are they looking at? That this, this is, that time interval has so an effect on the fluctuation. So this is, okay, this is a, this is a, a mid price. Um, and the, which price? It's the mid price of the, price. exactly. So but the mid price for 250 hours can change, can have, I mean, that's real uh, changing in the price. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, prices do change, but in a, the, 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 in a diffusive manner. So the, the second moment scales with the time scale, linearly. No, no, but if, uh, is it? Uh, uh, let's talk about the play down with after the class, because maybe I didn't get Yeah, but your, your problem is that it doesn't vary too much, but or it varies too much, or it's, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't get it. The price of so meat. Yeah, you said that this is a mid price. No, no, no. So mid, 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 mid. Mid price. M I D. Yeah. Okay. The mid price doesn't change a lot. How do you know? I mean, it's the average. Yeah, the mid price means that the average. The mid price is between. So, so it's what I say is that there is this. It's the average, not the median. But yes. Okay. So, but actually, you can look here. Is there is a dynamics of a limit order book? I didn't want to go into this, but. So, so what you do here is, uh, it's an other way to look at it, which is in time, okay, let, 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 let's only look at one curve here, which is, uh, or only, sorry, only look at, uh, at the points, let's say, so the, the circles here, so, because I don't want to explain all the figures. So this is in time in seconds, so what, it's one hour probably, uh, how the price is changing, and you say that it's continuously changing, so it's, it's for one given stock, but it's continuously changing on some, okay, here actually it does change a lot, it changed, what, 10% in one hour, that's, uh, uh, 1% in one hour, so that, that's, that's not typical, but prices vary all the time, so there are people trading all the time, and prices change accordingly. So this uh, 250 hours, which is uh, 10 days, is, is a long time, so it's, uh, I don't know if. Uh, yeah. uh, so, okay. So one one thing that I wanted to mention, but I don't want to go into detail now here, is that that actually, if you look at uh, at how this thing here behaves, I just put a I just put a um, proportionality to tau, but actually, what you see is that the fluctuations of the price are proportional to the price itself, typically. Uh, which, uh, which gives the question, okay, so is it, uh, uh, is it a good way to look at it, yeah? Like these Dow Jones Index and S&P 500 are large markets. At, at all large markets, does this usually happen? Yes, uh, yes, so if, if the diffusive behavior hap is always there. Is it general? It's very general, but of course, uh, so we will get to this in the later class, but so what, why is there this diffusivity? Well, in, in a uh, hand-waving manner, it's because all these people are trying to buy and sell. Everyone tries to gain on it, and they, they cancel somehow out each other's effects, and it becomes a diffusive process. Now, if there are very few people trading on a market, you can indeed find non-diffusive behavior, maybe up to larger timescales, because... Uh, if it's if it's a, if the limit order book is very empty, you can have uh, deviations from this. And of course, this is a big time average. So locally, you can have moments when I mean you are able to build predictors if you are very smart for the price, but very weak ones. And on average, the the, the diffusivity holds. So, so that means that low frequency trading is easy. No, the price values do not grow. The prices are diffusive. So they're usually growing. No, they are. They're, they're, it's the variance which is growing. So it's, it's like a random walk. It's also the first moment we didn't write up, but the first moment is, uh, is zero. 
on short times. And the second moment uh, goes, uh, goes linearly in time. <coughs> so, so, okay, so what I was just mentioning that one also finds that, that the changes in the price are, are proportional to the price itself, so which brings up the question that is a random walk type of model or a Brownian motion type of model good, or you want rather some geometric Brownian motion, so some multiplicative process. Uh, we won't go into these details here. I don't really have time for that. Uh, the answer is that it depends a bit on the time scale, how you want to model it. So on short time scales, things are pretty much additive. The prices are additive because of essentially the structure of the order book. There are, uh, there are minimum distances and th this makes things additive. On longer time scales, it's more close to a multiplicative process, which actually is what is used in uh, mathematical finance typically. So, So okay, so this was the, the about the somehow the first game. So so are, are prices behaving in a diffusive manner? Is it uh, are prices unpredictable in a simple way? But it's the there is the second question that that we should also look at. So okay, what he said: if changes are IID, that price changes should be Gaussian on some aggregate time scale, and um, and so we want to look at this next. So. Not needed. So the next question is, uh, is uh, our price changes Gaussian? Yes. Yes. And, and, and we will look at it now. So it's now that we will really look at it. He claimed this. Okay. We were testing it. Uh, so, so our price change is Gaussian. Um, and well, I think, I mean, uh, the answer is uh, that there were people in the say, actually, there is Benoit Mandelbrot, I think, who was one of the first people studying this and, uh, and claiming that. Uh, that no, they are not really Gaussian, and uh, and we can look at the return. So I will put a couple of figures here, and this is I mean it's a very important part of the of the course, so you need to understand. So what we put here is for uh, again for the S and P 500 index, we see the 30 minute returns and the one day return distribution. So what we have here, eta is the distribution in in person uh, of the return. So eta is the return of the price. So, so the the variation of price. Here it's in percentages, so it's, uh, it's relative to the price itself. And we see on the y-axis the distribution of this uh, quantity. I mean, uh, on the figure, see the distribution. Uh, so what we can see, uh, the points are, so, so the, well, positive, let, let's forget positive and negative for the moment. So it's, it's the points are the data, and, uh, and uh, what is this? Uh, dashed line is the normal distribution, a Gaussian distribution. So it's not Gaussian. We have to, the feeling. So what we see already here is that, well, okay, here there seems to be a shoulder, a wider shoulder of the of the Gaussian, and a much thinner tail of the Gaussian. So the probability. Well, what does this mean? That the probability of having a price change of uh, three percent, let's say, uh, would be I don't know. Let's say ten to the minus four. In, uh, in reality, if you look at data, and it would be something much lower for the Gaussian distribution, uh, as you can see. So I mean, it's not plotted here. I don't know if it's uh, clear what we, we see on the figures. So this is for uh, for the 30-minute window, but of course we can look for longer windows. So let's say one day, because maybe we need longer times to 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 get to this Gaussian. It seems to be the case that even at one day, we are uh, far away from it. Again, this. Dashed line is the is, is a Gaussian distribution, and uh, and the actual uh, price changes are much uh, more fat tailed. The probability of a large change is uh, is uh, is much higher. Uh, so 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 
Yeah, so this is for so, so this is for the S&P 500 index. I have a couple of figures like this because I think this is um, maybe the most important claim here, surely of today. So this is the same type of figure for the GBP USD rate. So just to show that there are so yeah. Yes, the return is simply the return. Okay, this, uh, return means price change. Uh, so return is the same as price change in a in a um, hand waving manner. Why do I say hand waving manner? Because you can define two ways return. You can say that return is uh, okay at time t. One time scale tau is uh, this. This is the trivial definition. But you can also say that for uh, on some time scales, actually you find that that this thing in itself, so this, the, the 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 amount of which the price changes, is proportional to the price itself. So often, what you want to look at another definition of return can be more to say that it's this thing here. So normalized by, by its value now, that you say that this is, is more meaningful. In general, what you can say is that at, very, at high frequencies, at, at, at very small time scales, you are more interested in this measure. And at longer scales, you are more interested in these measures. But it doesn't really make it. It, it makes a difference uh, for the actual number that you look. But, but the, the behavior of the two quantities is very similar. Actually, one can write up that, that uh, for a multiplicative process, it's the, the changes in the logarithm which, which follow a, a simple random walk. So and what we have here, so here it's in percentages. So, so it's, it's the second definition. So uh, the, the price of three means that the, the change in the price Pt plus tau minus Pt is 3% of the price in the beginning. Is that okay? But it's, uh, I'm sorry, no, here, okay. So that's why uh, you're absolutely right. Actually, we have two curves here because of putting log axis on here. So you have the positive and negative tail of the distribution. So you have the entire distribution. On average, the price change is zero. And what we plot here is uh, like flipping the negative side uh, over and looking at both tails of the distribution. So, and those are the two curves. So what you see is that well, they are quite similar for this for these time scales. Typically, for short time scales, up and down changes are, are very similar. Um, so this is for the for the rate of GBP USD. A very similar figure, I mean, these are sort of identical, but uh, for, for the German uh, state bond, bond, again, you have a distribution which is way more fat tail than the negotiation on a 30 minute uh, scale and, on, and on, a, on a daily scale as well. And actually, if you put together a bit, so, I mean, okay, we have seen that, that this is true for, uh, for uh, for most of the product classes, actually, you could put different types of products on one. So if you scale things together, actually here we have a, a, a bit newer figure. But for different types of financial products, I won't go into much detail. So, but equi is equities, uh, vol is volatility. So it's option prices and CDS is, I won't go into detail. But very different uh, products have very similar tails. So what you can see here is simply that the probability density decays somehow, so this is a log-log figure, decays on a, as a power law, roughly, with, uh, with very simple, very, very similar power law behavior, which is somehow an exponent of 3.5-ish in this case. Uh, yes? Sorry? So, so the, the points are observations here everywhere. Yeah? 
Well, okay, it, more, more what I think, but we'll get to this. So I cannot give you a, I don't know where large deviations uh, theory, but so what happens here, why it's not the case and why we will see for longer time scales as well, is that things are very much correlated. So not, not, on the, not the first moment, so, so things are unpredictable, but in higher moments you have correlations. Yeah, well, I mean, here we don't assume anything. We just look, is it Gaussian? Okay. Thinking that it's Gaussian would assume that correlations are not very strong, as we have seen before. And here we just see that it's not Gaussian. But we'll see that, that actually there are correlations. And that's, that's what, uh, what causes it. Uh, so so to, to write up, so, so what, we have to, what we seem to see here is that, OK, it's not that just not Gaussian, but it seems to be somehow a power low tail. Uh, uh, that, 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 that governs it. Actually, I write up, we won't use it, but, it, but it's good to, it's, it's important to know. So the, so the best fit for these curves up to, so let's say, uh, best fit for uh, up, what, uh, let's say, to, to a few hours, a few minutes, to a few hours, or daily scale, is a student distribution. I don't know if uh, it's a known distribution to you. I will write it up, but uh, uh, it's important if one wants to model these prices. Uh, we won't use it explicitly. Uh, so, so what they say is that the distribution of, 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 of the price changes is well, the following thing. I write it down. But So it's this type, this distribution. I write it up. Uh, it will be in the in the notes that I send you. So don't 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 stress about that. But it's more interesting, I think, to look at this distribution, which is this. So, well, okay, there is this gamma function here, which is related to the um, what's the name of the, the factorial function. We won't go into detail. What is important here is that this distribution has a tail. Uh, which behaves in the following way. Someone has problems. No, no. Damn it. Okay, don't tell. So the import, so, so this is the, the, the formula of the student's distribution. We won't go into detail. This, there is new a parameter which is called, I think, the degrees of freedom. So we can see for, I will discuss about it in, in a second. But what you can see is that for, when uh, so the price change is above uh, this a the parameter a then then the tail of this distribution is 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 a power law with, a, with a, an exponent one plus uh, one plus new so so the best fit is usually the student distribution with uh, with a new around uh, with a new which is well somehow between three and five that's that's what you find empirically what's important to know is so, so this okay this is the student distribution. Here, what's important is that for new equals infinity, you get back the Gaussian distribution. To see, so, 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 the, so, so the black curve is the normal distribution. It's, it's a limit of the students. Yeah. How did, how did you find that the best fit is the distribution? That people, how do you find it? Well, this you see it from data that that you're looking for a. From here, you see that you're looking for a distribution that has in the tails behaves somehow in a parallel manner. And then people were trying different distributions. We don't need this explicitly now. It's, what's important for us is this, that it's a very much fat-tailed distribution. It's good to know that it's a student's distribution, but unless you're actually modeling price changes for something you don't, it's not something to, to learn by heart. Um, so, 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 so for infinite uh, number of degrees of freedom, you get the Gaussian distribution. And for uh, and for uh, you can see here for different uh, values of new you have a, you get a fat a wider tail a fatter tail of, of the distribution. Um, what is important for this from here actually that we will get to is that okay we see that 
this new is between three and five. But what one can uh, know if you write up this distribution is that actually that means that, uh, that there is a finite second moment. So well, in general, for new above two, you have uh, a finite second moment. So this, uh, this will be important. This will get back to its, its effect about the student's distribution. And, um, and, uh, and okay, I don't want to go more in detail into fitting this, but what is very much important, I mean, the, the, the main message from this is, of course, you can say what's, what's the fit, but the, the probability of large price changes in, in real data is much, much higher than what you expect from Gaussian distributed data. For example, I, I just wrote this up, but, uh, but one can calculate for him or herself. That, for example, for example, if you say that okay, you want to look at the probability that uh, that you have a price change which is uh, equal to ten times, let's say the the standard deviation of the process, something that is in, in a Gaussian. So this is a sigma. So that, that in a Gaussian world would be would be almost zero. So in a, if the distribution is Gaussian, then this probability would be well. How much would it be? I wrote it up. It would be ten to the minus twenty three. So it's, it's something really negligible. While if it's uh, if it's actually a student uh, with uh, I think it's nu equal to three, so which is not far from a good fit, it would be. 10 to the minus 4, which is a small number, but, uh, but uh, finitely small. Um, so, so, and okay, I said that I will, it wasn't just blah blah yesterday about what's the difference between economics and economics. So, actually, in traditional finance, even today, most of the models are using normal distribution in the, in the, for, 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 the, for price changes. Meaning that they, they, they completely n neglect the, any large price change, which can, uh, which can in practice happen with, with, uh, quite often. So if you look at uh, how often uh, a given sigma event, so a price change larger than a given sigma, uh, how often this happens, you, you can see that very often you can have large changes. And, uh, and of course, if all if people have models which are based on, I'm, I don't think I have to go much into detail. This, but of course, if all your models are based on the fact that there are no large price changes, then first of all you will be surprised. But also, if all people have similar models which are based on the fact that there are no price changes, they will be surprised at the same moment, which can give, make uh, the markets extremely turbulent. So if uh, there is a big price change that the model people the, the models people are using never predicted then everyone tries to escape from the market when these price changes happen which will uh, which will just enhance uh, um, enhance the the, the, the the turbulence the the it will just make a even larger price change so so i'm again at the point of what should i do Okay, so maybe we should uh, stop here. No, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Huh? Well, it's time, right? It's it's, uh, it's now. Okay, so okay, so let's stop here and but but ask, ask questions if you feel. Yeah, but the problem is that for five minutes.